Welcome back. Uh, today's project is going to be a bit different. Uh, there's not going to be any machining. But uh, over the last few years, I've, as I've accumulated measuring tools, I've kind of gained an affinity for JT Slocum micrometers. Uh, I wanted to share how I restore them. It doesn't take much, just a few simple things that I've got here. Uh, some alcohol, a wire brush, some long-handled Q-tips, rags, a couple other things. Uh, we'll see it all as I go along. So I originally got uh, some Slocum micrometers and a lot uh, of, of micrometers off of eBay as I was tooling up my, uh, my shop originally. Uh, there was a bunch of Starrett's, a couple of Lufkins, and then a few of these JT Slocums. Uh, a couple of things drew me to them. Um, the first is, I guess, <laughs> I'm a bit of a hipster and I like uncommon things. Um, second, and more importantly, I really like the way that they're built. The method of calibration in particular, as well as how they compensate for wear and the threads. I'll go ahead and disassemble the mic and uh, show you its innards and how they work. A lot of the time, let me get this all the way undone here. Okay, so this one, like a lot of the ones I've come across in my collection, uh, the compensator nut, which normally sits in this space right here, as well as the tension spring, are down here at the bottom of the thimble. I just guess over time, they just gradually thread themselves down there. But So usually, just a little... or a couple of wraps on a soft surface, wood or plastic or something, will dislodge small tension screw and then to get the compensator nut out I just use this small piece of uh, stainless steel tubing that I slightly flared the end on and it fits just inside the serrations and it usually is uh, usually works a treat to retrieve the nut sometimes they're a little more stubborn in which case I'll usually spray some WD-40 or coil or something down into the thimble and let it sit uh, for a couple days and it'll soften up. But this one's coming out nice and easy. Okay. So there's the compensator nut. All right, next up is the adjusting nut. So what I'll usually do is put the little compensator nut back on and thread the two of them together like they're supposed to go. And I'll explain about how these go together later. But I found without a little bit of support the little wrench gap here likes to tear out. So it's got this uh, small little wrench. That you, uh, I forget which one I have that it came with, but people that sell them on eBay usually have this little wrench with them. And all it does is just fits in a little slot. Just gently turn it up. And thankfully, this one's coming out relatively easily. They're not supposed to come out, they're not supposed to screw in and out very easily, but sometimes can be very stubborn. All right, so that's it for disassembly. There's not a whole lot to them. I mean, micrometers are relatively simple instruments. But now it's time for cleaning. So I'm sure an ultrasonic cleaner would probably work best for this. Uh, I don't have one. <laughs> so this is the way that, uh, this is the method I've come up with to clean them all. Set this stuff aside. 
tray, glove up. So these long, the Q-tips with the long wooden sticks work really well for this. Um, when I first started uh, doing this, restoring these micrometers, I used to just dip them in alcohol and swab around, throw it away, grab another one, dip it in alcohol, swab it around, and it was pretty wasteful. And it also took a lot of time. So what I've decided, what I've came up with, is I'll actually break it into sections depending on how thick the sticks are four or five pieces should do i'm going to need several swaps for this anyway okay so i'll take a few of these pieces I'll go ahead and jam them into the compensator, not like that, followed by the head of the Q-tip. Now you see it won't pull through easily. So then I'll go ahead and put a little alcohol on it and basically thread it through. You can see, whoop, you can see the it gets the dirt pretty good. This one's actually pretty clean, so I'll do it again. Just take the same swab and flip it over to a clean side. A little more alcohol. And you can see just a couple passes through like that it comes out really clean. I'll actually pass this one through one more time just to be sure. Oop. Get back here. That's it. And this one was pretty clean. Um, most of the time, even if they're dirty, it'll only take one or two more. And I usually just clean up the little edges that, did, that didn't get. Clean in here. And that's it. Whoop. Compensator nut is clean. Just leave that to dry and I'll work on the adjuster nut. It's basically the same thing. All right. I mean, you can see, it took two Q-tips to do that, so definitely a more efficient method than I was doing before. Just clean out this little corner and here. All right, adjusting nut. Oh, well, 
I'll also take a small wire brush, load it with some alcohol as well, and do the threads on the outside. Okay, that's the adjuster not done. Now as for the internal threads and the mic frame itself in the uh, inside the barrel, I'll usually do the same, uh, but actually a lot of the time that's not as dirty. So I will just do the old method. It's just once to see. And a lot of the times this isn't really that bad. A couple of swabs will usually clean this out as well. Although this one might be bad, so we'll see. But this needs a few more sticks. Okay, so the only threads left to clean are the ones on the spindle itself. Um, to clean these up, what I'll do, and I realize this isn't the best way to do this, but it works and it hasn't given me any troubles in other, uh, in other pieces I've restored. So I'll go ahead and thread the compens or the, the adjusting nut back in a little bit. Thread spindle into it. I'll go ahead and spray some alcohol down here and then I'll fill up the thimble with it as well. And then I'll just run the whole thing up in. This one's, again, this, this unit was pretty clean. You can see that it's already spinning pretty freely. So, and just to make sure I get all the threads all the way down to the bottom, I'll we'll go ahead and put the adjuster nut, or the compensating nut back on. We'll line it up properly. Do the same thing again. Now that all the working parts of the mic are clean, it's time for the exterior, the cosmetics. So I usually start with the thimble. I have a wire wheel on the drill and I usually just go around.
So now that all the working parts have been cleaned, the uh, parts that aren't going to be painted have been wire wheeled, polished up a bit. The only thing left to do is strip the paint. So from here it is off to the bead blaster. I'll meet you there. So I'm fortunate enough to have access to a bead blasting cabinet at work. Um, it's not like a normal sand, but I mean, I guess it is like a normal sand blaster stuff, but the media that we use is actually uh, tiny little plastic balls. I'm trying to get some on my hand here so you can see what they look like. There you go. Uh, these are nice because they will remove any paint or things like that, but it won't even touch the underlying metal. So it, it's ideal for cleaning things like this because I don't have to worry about hitting the... Uh, uh, hitting the measuring surfaces and damaging them. So now we're basically ready for paint. Uh, but before I do that, the last thing to do uh, is to re-enamel all of the engravings on both the frame, the barrel, and the spindle, or uh, the thimble, I'm sorry. And for that, I use this. Uh, works really well. I got it for cheap off uh, the internet. So, Get everything ready to do that. Clean up all the engravings. And a little trick, if you ever need a small, like, stiff bristle brush to get into clean up things like this, what I'll usually do is take an acid brush and cut the bristles down. And it makes them nice and stiff, but they're still soft. So then I'll just spray a little alcohol on that. Just kind of go to town, kind of hit it all around a couple different angles to make sure you get into the little crevices. And a little more alcohol. Go ahead and hit the numbers and the scale. Just like any paint marker, if you've ever used one, you just push down on the tip. Just fill everything in as you go.
All right, now I just gotta let that sit for a minute. So I'll usually take a piece of paper and fold it up a few times. So I find that using a rag actually will pull the enamel out uh, of the engravings, but the paper itself, it's pretty stiff. Just go ahead and wipe. That is significantly more legible. All right, we'll let that sit for a little while, and then it's time to mask everything off for paint. When I mask off the barrel, I try and catch just a little bit, kind of see, or I catch just a little bit of the curve where it meets the frame. I found on things that have sharp corners, if you're having trouble getting right up to them, you can actually just take the razor blade and kind of you know, cross, you know, across it and slightly down as you go motion, as long as the edge that you're going against is relatively sharp, it'll cut the tape right along the edge, just like that. It's good for little corners and stuff, but also if you can just slice it like normal, that's basically the better way. I used to mask off, like try and get masking tape inside this bore here, and then I discovered earplugs. These things work great for this kind of stuff. Just roll it up. Stick it in, and wait. Uh, I've also found you can't stick it in too far because as it expands, if you're past the little bushing that's in here, it'll mushroom out at that end and it makes it difficult to push it back out. So I'll give that a minute to expand and once that's done, let's take a razor blade. Cut it off flush. 
Easiest way I've found to mask off little holes. And then I just keep the rest of it for something similar in the future. And the last thing is the anvil, which is kind of a pain, just because it's so thin. Alright, that's that. And now, I'll be right back.